Good evening and welcome to VI Voices. I'm Emil Henderson III along with Clint Ferris, Boyd McFarland and Yoki Henley. We are here tonight and we're going to have with us tonight as we continue our election coverage, Robert Moorhead and Ignacio Janos III. And they are both seeking seats in the 31st Legislature of the Virgin Islands. But before we get to them, we will continue with what we do every, before every show is our hot topics. And Senator Hansen is like the truckie that won't go away. Oh, and so she's filed a complaint for a temporary restraining order for a permanent a permanent injunction as well relief um, in the district court of the virgin islands and five other individuals three of whom i believe work in directly in her office mm -hmm. one who works for central staff of the legislature and another person who works at the human services have all filed also tro's and and permanent restraining orders both of the complaints are pretty much identical with the exception of the people who are parties in the claim and they are basically claiming kind of the same things that they claimed in the Supreme, the Supreme Court case, the Superior Court case, but they're also claiming that their votes have been disenfranchised because the supervisor of elections has refused to place Senator Hansen on the ballot, despite the Supreme Court's order. And they are arguing that the pardon issued by the governor has completely absolved everything, and therefore she should be able to file nomination papers now and go forward. Well, uh, even if she file even if by some miracle of chance the um you know higher governor become god and can give absolution for everything she still missed the, the deadline to file because at the time she was not legal so it sounds simple right yeah but some people just don't get it yeah. you know i think what we need to understand let, let's let's try and explain this so everybody can understand pardons okay a pardon is something that any executive, chief executive of a, of a country mm -hmm. or um, a state or territory may do. In the Virgin Islands, it is through the Revised Organic Act, Section 11, that gives the power and authority to the governor to pardon for local crimes. There's been some distinction as to whether or not the senator has been convicted for local crimes because she was convicted in the district court, which is a federal court, but really her convictions were local charges, which was the local statute for failure to file taxes. So for now, I will presume that he can pardon her. The next issue becomes whether or not his pardon of her is retroactive, meaning it goes back to cure everything from before, or if it only goes forward, meaning prospective. No case law will you ever find that says a pardon goes back to everything else. In fact, a pardon does not remove or expunge your criminal record. It simply restores your civil rights. So though she's been pardoned, her conviction for the record remains. Everything she did remains. Her judgment conviction of the sentencing remains. So she has a criminal record and will have a criminal record. In fact, remember she was also charged for conflict of interest in the global resources stuff, but she was never convicted of that. Mm -hmm. But all of those things are part of her criminal record that cannot be expunged. And the reason why a pardon cannot expunge your criminal record is because expungement of records is specifically the purview of the courts. Pardons or executive clemencies are the executive branch. And as you know, we have a thing that's called separation of powers. So the, the governor cannot go into the purview of the, of the courts. She will have to file a, a, a motion to expunge her record with the courts, which it's highly unlikely that a judge would grant the expungement of that kind of record. Okay, so we have that specific issue and whether or not it absolves everything. Now, as Yoki, you pointed out, mm -hmm. uh, because it's not retroactive, our local statute requires that all nomination petitions and or papers be filed by the second Tuesday of May in every general election year. And so when the Supreme Court issued its ruling that the nomination papers must be set aside because she was ineligible, it is as if she did not file papers at all. Mm -hmm. So any filing of papers after the second Tuesday of May 2013 is a nullity. And so she cannot be on the ballot at all. And so that's why I don't understand the purpose of this lawsuit. I don't know where this lawsuit is going to go other than really what you're kind of doing is trying to form shop and hoping that the district court will overturn something. But the problem that you have to understand is that our Supreme Court is the highest court in this territory and they have made a ruling. And under the, the committee rules and under the rules of our Revised Organic Act, the district court cannot overturn a decision of the Supreme Court. In fact, they must give deference to them on all things that are purely local, which would be this issue. So I'm not really sure why they're over there in the district court. <laughs> so not meaning to laugh, right? But they're going to a lower court to try to... To trump 
the Supreme uh, Court. Oh, Not even funny. the Third Circuit will overturn a Supreme Court decision. And let me tell you the distinction. Anything filed before December 8th, 28, 2012, mm -hmm. the Third Circuit can review the Supreme Court. But that's only because of the federal law that says we're giving you the autonomy to your courts, but we're going to allow the review of them for that time. Right. Anything that's filed after December 28, 2012, the Third Circuit is not involved at all. Which means your next step is only to go to the U.S. US Supreme, Supreme Court. I suspect that they are fully aware that the U.S. Supreme Court is not going to grant any writ of certiorari for them. So they're running over to the district court to try and get help and arguing about voter disenfranchisement and all this other nonsense, in my view. And the question begs, are these people who are claiming that they can't vote for Chucky Campbell, period. being disenfranchised? And that's the issue. <laughs> Nothing about not accepting Hansen's stuff precludes you from going out to vote. No law requires that we allow you to vote for specific people. Mm -hmm. What it says is that they have to allow you to vote. So nothing precludes them from voting. That's why I don't understand where this is going. But so I'm going tomorrow to, to sit down. No, not to laugh. I'm going to monitor. I'm going to monitor because the AG's office allegedly will be representing the Board of Elections and Fox. The board and of the AG has issued an opinion that is contrary to what Fox did. And Attorney Rowan has specifically stated that the AG agrees with her, mm -hmm. meaning Lee Rowan's position. And I need to know how the AG will squirm out of this, because what's going to happen, I think there's a huge conflict in the AG going to represent the board so, tomorrow. And now we're going to ask the same question. We're going to ask that question. And so we'll see what happens. So I'm going to just monitor to see what happens, what they're going to do, and decide whether or not I will file an amicus curry brief, which is a friend of the court, which if somebody doesn't address an issue, then you can file something to address an issue. Mm -hmm. um, or just, Judge Lewis might just say, listen, get out of my courtroom. I'm not <laughs> getting involved. I've had enough of this election stuff. Your Supreme Court has dealt with it. Out. She may do that and save me the time of having to do anything. But if she doesn't, then I will go ahead and file what I need to file because I know they filed in district court. They didn't sue Senator Bryan you know, in, in a, his, his official capacity as himself alone because they knew that I would come. And so to get me to not show up, then they don't really sue him. They don't sue her. And now because the attorney general is who's representing the board, I can't go in and represent the board. But I can go and watch and I can monitor everything that's going on. And I can tell you there are already some ethical issues. I read the complaint, there's already some ethical issues on board. There's already some issues, again, with conflict of interest with the AG's office and this current board and Fox. Um, it seems that they've sued Fox individually, which you can't really do. Um, so, hmm, okay, right. It, it's a mess. But and we'll talk about it next week, Tuesday, because I'm sure I'll have more to talk about it next Tuesday. <laughs> I think I think we should leave it alone at this point. No, but I, I truly don't want to leave it alone. Since I we're think on, we should. The no, only since thing we're on this Chucky Hands and Apes issue, I think we need to talk about the Democratic response. Finally, yes. So, to Senator Hansen's pub, which yeah. caused the prominent member of the Centennial Commission to resign. Who is that? Dr. Dr. Krieger. Krieger. Wow. She left her post. You know Dr. Krieger, right? Yeah. So we're both I'm well respected professor at the University of the Virgin Islands. Mm. Has declared that she is not going to participate in any government that would pardon Senator Hansen or any person in the manner in which this party went. And that's very good. But the funniest mm -hmm. thing about it is, it's a, I find it that. The Democratic Party, through its um, chair, chair, State chair. C um, Cecil Benjamin, mm -hmm. issued a statement after the pardon, and he cited one of the reasons why he didn't do it before because he was out of the territory. Mm -hmm. No, and, and, and I find it strange. No? And I said, "Do you Pluto?" No, but, but I, I want to know where he was. No, because. <laughs> I, everyone else spoke out. The League of Women Voters spoke out. And one would have expected... And a lot of other organizations in St. Thomas also spoke out against this. And one would have expected the Democratic Party to take a lead on this. But the Democratic Party has yet to take a lead on anything. But why you know, Why after the fact? Are they not trying to save face? Because they don't want egg in their face? Because this one is attributed to them what and their government? What, what I don't understand is if you are the head of a, of a party and you see the possibility of you being able to get another one of your Democrats in office, why you would not be up in arms about this issue and that, uh, to try to ensure that that yes, seat is gone. Correct. Exactly. And not just one, but maybe possibly Especially two. Especially when, in the last two elections, two of your Democratic Party members lost their seat by one. by being number eight. Mm -hmm. Correct. And not being able to be in the Senate because she was, of, in, there of, she was in there illegally. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a big, big issue. Okay. But in addition to that, Senator Diane Capehart issued today a letter 
requesting that the Senate President Sean Michael Malone, wherever he is, mm. that he schedules a hearing to me. deal with whether or not to remove Senator Hansen from the 30th legislation of the Virgin Islands. Bold move. I think so. A very bold move and a very good move. I want to go back to, to Senator Hansen. I think that um, the only thing I got to say regarding this situation is the fact of how her response has been. And I think um, it speaks volumes of her character, how she's been mm. responding, dealing mm -hmm. and as, like trying to blame game and blaming everybody and every and anybody except herself for her own actions and respecting the quote. I think it has shown some kind of leadership abilities or characteristics that she does accept the fact that, okay, what I did was wrong. And then run next I, year. I'm not, exactly, and then run in two years from now. I think she'd have, she'd have even embraced more of the community exactly. had she done so. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the only thing really I got to say about yeah. that. It's the righteous but, indignation. Mm -hmm. That's what, you did something wrong. You know you did something wrong. So, okay, you know what? All right. In the court, like what you said, I'm going to now like take some time mm -hmm. to get my regroup, get right. myself in order, and I will come back. Because there's this thing as if she can't help you unless she's a senator. And I, I don't understand. understand. It could be, it could be I mean, her actions and her words could be insightful as well. And if she wants harmony or balance in the community, then she could squash that because of all that. Uh, well, she but can't she's when she's, all she of this can't when she's running around talking about people's children, right, about, right. talking about people who are criminals. You know, indicating, I mean, talking about even the justice's senators, sister and her integrity and talking about the justice and her integrity. I mean, she's talking about everything except the one I pay my did. taxes. And, and I was convicted. Everybody else is getting blamed because it's everybody else's fault that she was convicted for Correct. her crimes. And, so she, and she also is manipulating the voters. Because if you look at the ad that she ran in the Davis this past that weekend. That was very no, but And the tacky. unmitigated gall mm -hmm. to talk about Companies who ain't paying pay taxes. taxes. <laughs> and you ain't paying taxes. You ain't paying none. And, and, and you were talking about people who ain't paying taxes. <laughs> and struggling. See that, and that struggling the to pay. But you see, and you could see the, you could understand the position of the League of Women Voters. That would be the, the reason. Because it does set a bad example. For uh, uh, when, we, when we are going through, or what we have gone through thus far, and we have an economy and we, we, we're trying to collect all our tax money, what are you saying to? Well, I got a few clients I send any pardons for, <laughs> requests for. And if she got a pardon, I think they should be able to get a pardon too. I, I think all those young boys they've arrested for simple possession of marijuana and all these other things that they can't get jobs for because they have this on their record or they can't get student loans or people are going around the place looking at them and saying, oh, we don't want you around us so you can't live here, you can't work here. Some of them can't even get public housing because they have a conviction for drugs on their record. Then all those young boys who are 20, 22, 23, 20 years old, every last one they need to be pardoned. Just them tell Golden Grove and Honestly, done. I think you should definitely send him. There's no, there shouldn't I'm be just it, of course. Set all of them. Which reminds me, you know, for a pardon, there's a thing called a pardon package. Yeah. And you got to fill out a pardon package, list your conviction, you have to admit and state what it is that you did, all these other things. I would like to know if Chuck Yancey filled right. a pardon package. Oh, you have to do that in order to get a pardon? For him to even be reviewed, that's what you're supposed to do. Uh -huh. And it goes to the AG, the AG does a full background investigation, goes to the, the prosecuting authority to determine what happened in the record. And keep your mind that she knows. You know, one can assume that she knows. It's going to get done and it's going to be done retroactively. Because don't forget when our governor went and took the half a million to fix his house, what he tried to do afterwards. What I would like somebody to do, I would like the Daily News or the Avis or anybody that hopefully wants to be doing news to request a Freedom of Information Act request her pardon package <laughs> and then let them say to you we don't have any the no. how you pardon she no but it is and, and you're right no because I, i'm telling you straight but and but you bring another thing because where is the period i have, have a this. copy of the pardon package that what it would look like so i'm going to show you during a break and then at the end we'll talk about that all right and so, another, in addition to that you got to keep in mind that she ain't the only one that's made for a pardon or would want a pardon so what happened to pick and choose who they're going to... Uh, I don't know what they're doing. Expedited That's like the quickest pardon I have ever seen in my life happen in, in this year. From the 28th to the 3rd. Nothing yes. said five that. Days. Like that. Nothing and what was it, like that. Well, I know we want to know, but I have, to, I have to say this. I have to say this. You know, what's important about this whole procedure thing, that's why I'm, like, I'm monitoring tomorrow, is the Supreme Court opinion came on August 28th. Mm -hmm. The Superior Court issued their order removing her August 29th. Right. And on August 29th, Attorney Rohn wrote to... Mm -hmm. to Come to Supervisor Fox and says to her, I have the, the opinion, my client has the opinion of the Supreme Court, I'm going to await you sending me the notice of defect so that she can resubmit her application. I mean, her nomination papers. Mind you, pardon nobody is talking about pardon yet, right? So this, this is the 29th of August. And on August 31st, 
the governor then says to the people, oh, I think I hear publicly that the lawyer is asking for Chucky to, to be, for me to pardon Senator Hansen. And I've instructed the attorney general to research this issue and let me know what I can do. That's August 31st, right? We can. September 3rd mm -hmm. comes out. And the, 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 the what's his name? No, it wasn't August 31st. August 31st was a yeah. Sunday. That's yeah. when the press release came out. Uh -huh. No, but it didn't issue it on um, the Friday or the Saturday? Wow, the no. Friday? Oh. No, no. Oh, the, the press release. No, no, no. The press release was on a Sunday. No, he no, said it on a Sunday. It's a Sunday? Yes, yes. August Sunday, 31st. Said it. Was... And then on September 3rd, the AG's opinion came out at the same time with the governor's the pardon. pardon. And the AG's opinion has the identical language that's written in Attorney Wall's August 29th, 2014 letter. Hmm. So you got to figure out what happened with all of that. You knew, they had to have known before that we're getting the party. <laughs> and in my view, the plan had to have been, it was the Supreme Court rule against her, this we're going to do, uh, this is how we're going to go ahead and do it. But see, the problem with having these little clandestine things is you got to know how to do it. And then do it right. <laughs> so anyway, so we'll be back with Robert Moorhead. Back in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back to VI Voices. We have with us Mr. Robert Moorhead, who is seeking a seat in the 31st Legislature of the Virgin Islands. Good evening, Mr. Moorhead, and welcome to VI Voices. Good evening. Good evening. This Good is evening. your first time on the show, correct? Yes, it is okay. my first time on the show. And so what we want to do is to do a quick introduction of who you are and let us know why you are seeking this seat in the legislature. Okay, well, good evening. My name is Robert Moorhead. I am a Frederick Douglass Republican, number two on the St. Croix ballot. And the reason that I've gotten involved uh, this year uh, with the campaign and seeking an office in the 31st. We in trouble and we've been going in circles. We have a lot of plans, we have a lot of energy, but we're not moving forward. And at present, we have found ourselves in crisis. We have kicked the can so far down the road that we've gone from issues and problems to crisis mode. And unfortunately, the elected officials seem to be walking around with their eyes wide shut and we're not getting anywhere. We're making poor investments. Our education system is always questionable. And part of our solution, as far as I am concerned, is here in the territory, specifically St. Croix. Our concept is to localize everything. It has to be for us, by us. And once we've made that accomplishment, we will find that we change our mindset from you know, receiving handouts to taking a helping hand and moving ourselves forward. Okay, so that our audience knows what you're talking about, what is a Frederick Douglass Republican? And how does that fit into our local Republican Party? Um, actually, we are, as a Frederick Douglass Republican, it's a movement. And basically, the movement does not agree with the status quo. We do not believe in the status quo for the National Party and, at present, the position that the local party has had over the last 30 years. We also don't believe in the status quo of the government, the direction that has been carrying the community. So we are seeking like-minded individuals that don't want to talk about Mele, but actually want to address the issues and address the issues for resolution. So as long as we can do that, we don't care what your banner is. I'm also a Moravian, but that doesn't count for anything. The movement that's basically... Not true. It counts for a lot. If you want to discriminate that's against why, me because of... That's why he said it. Yeah. Well, that's, that's why he said it. <laughs> oh, the Moravians. Chess, yeah, 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 okay, so. the Moravians count for a lot. <laughs> The, the understanding ahead. is there is no true two-party system here. Okay. The Republicans have failed in the Virgin Islands to be an active voice. Uh, we have failed to give an alternative to the struggles that we have been having. But is that an accurate statement that the Republicans have failed to be an active voice? When you have one of the loudest Republican voices, um, former yeah. Senator Harlan yeah. Redfield, who has been, played a major part in this administration. So, as I said before, we've not had a good voice. If we are part of this administration, then you're not a Republican. There are opposing opinions, yes, and opposing ways to get to Christian state. You mm -hmm. can go to highway, you could go center line. The objective is to get to Christian state. But if your route is center line and I'm taking center line, then I'm following you. If I go to highway, that's my route. And that's the way we're going. 
Yes. So where do you plan to take this? Um, and, and the reason I, I'm, I'm interested in this Frederick Douglass um, Republican thing. Um, where, where do you see this going? Oh, we've joked on the show that there are eight Republicans in the territory. We've joked about that, right? You make number so nine if now. Eight, if there's eight, <laughs> you're number nine. So if you are making a distinction between a Federal Douglas Republican, well, how many Federal Douglas Republicans are there? There are about 110,000 Frederick Douglas Republicans nationally. Um, K. Carl Smith, who was the original uh, um, conservative messenger, formed the Frederick Douglass movement basically because we wanted to move past certain obstacles and be able to go to conversation, okay. irregardless of what your party affiliation is. Again, our mindset is to address the problem with the objective of coming to a resolution. Not just, you know, well, I don't like Clint because he was wearing yellow and we can't address the issue right. that we're all hungry. So it is to be more focused towards the issue as opposed to being focused towards any external uh, extremity. So what is the platform going forward as you see it for this organization you're a part of? What, what exactly is, is the goal and aim of the this The Frederick Douglass Republicans are a movement. Yeah, but what it's you're not moving a, to? It's not a lifestyle. It's just basically a strategy that we use to bring together all folks so that we can have conversations for resolution. How about what? Well, our economic problems are first and foremost. Our energy problems are also issues that we have to address. We need to change our mindset, the way we look at these things, mm -hmm. when we're going to resolve them. So as far as, prime example, we speak about education, but there is a bill that was introduced some years back where our public uh, school students would not only get a diploma, but they would graduate with a certificate of vocation. That, for some reason, fell astray. Broaden the perspective from ninth to twelfth grade in our public schools. They are in a vocation and broaden the vocations to include the uh, IT and um, cosmopolitan office, the whole nine yards. Our young people are exposed to that from the high school. During the eleventh and twelfth grade, they do internship programs with private industries, not government, where they get work experience. So the those that want to become mechanics actually work in mechanic shops. Those that want to become pilots work down at the airport and we need to look at larger gambits than we do. We live on an island, yet everything that comes here either comes by boat or it comes by plane, and we control neither of those. When we go down to Seaborn, that was an entity that we invested in. We lost the investment for silly reasons. And again, we don't have our young people coming out of our schools to fly us back and forth. Expound on how you said we lost the investment for silly reasons, because I think basically what happened as in business, Corey could just undercut and gave them a better chance. I don't think it's the Well, it was reason. part of it was undercut, but all we, we spent $70 million poor investment expanding the runway to bring larger planes in. But none of these planes have the capacity when they get here to refuel at a reasonable rate, to be repaired at a reasonable rate. I don't have the ability to, re, to refuel at a reasonable rate. Well, right We've now St. Thomas, okay, for example, let's say St. Thomas's fuel is a dollar. Mm -hmm. St. Croix in the past, the fuel would have been 60 cents. I could fly to Puerto Rico and I could get that same fuel for 30 cents. Okay. Okay, good. Now St. Croix's price is a dollar, St. Thomas's price is a dollar. Mm -hmm. But I can actually fuel at a F, uh, fixed base operation, FBO, FBO in St. Thomas, mm -hmm. cheaper than I can fuel it in St. Croix. Okay. And you have actual. The traffic static. is going to. You actually no, but, have actual numbers to verify that? But um, let's, let's do the numbers. Today, no, I'm, 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 I'm just asking if yeah, you have actual numbers. Everybody has the numbers. I can bring you okay. Port Authority numbers to include the fact that... But wouldn't that be an issue with the Port Authority yeah. that's designed by the Port Authority to ensure that that's what happens? It, it is. I, I'm it just is. convinced yeah. that it's not necessarily that I'm convinced that our airport is stimmy, not because of mm -hmm. people don't want to come here. It's to me because of the regulations and policies that are set by the Virgin Port Authority. Yeah. Correct. That's, no, but that's not an accurate statement. No, but the, reason, me... the reason commercial planes don't come here is because St. Croix doesn't have a radar system. The reason St. Croix does not have a, have a radar, radar system, system is because we don't have the hotel capacity for the FAA to say that we have that traffic. So our rating in St. Croix is different because we do not have a radar. But at that but let me give you a good example. So St. Thomas has, uh, and this is not a St. Thomas St. Croix issue, but St. Thomas has two cruise ship ports. Yes. Crown Bay and, and Waiko. And here, yeah, even say. And on a one given time, you can Waiko, have as much as... You can have five um, ship at um, Havenside. Yeah. And, and you then can you can have, do a you Crown can have Bay. Three, you can have three down at Crown But there's not a problem that you have two major ports in one island. 
You follow me? Yeah. There's not a problem. No. But then when then so what then what's the issue in terms of developing Syncroy airport similar to how you have developed? Um see what you can. <laughs> Again, you can't further develop St. Croix's airport until you have the capacity for that airport. Okay. But we, we won't, keep, we, we, we won't be words, like a dog chasing it, it, our In other words, the reason I'm speaking this way is because I am a licensed pilot. And I when I come to St. Croix, I don't need to call St. Croix's Tower for me to put my plane down here. I can have Puerto Rico land me in St. Croix. Why? Because Puerto Rico has a radar system and they can see everything that's going on. Should I decide to have St. Thomas land me in based on an emergency and I cancel San Juan forwarding, I can call back to St. Thomas and tell them I cannot get in touch with St. Croix Tower. They will automatically, without question, land me into St. Croix. I'm not so that building that's there on St. Croix, why is, is it why is it there? It's a beautiful building with a pair of binoculars. I'm not asking you. I've put it on the record several times, even when I was on the radio. So nobody is in there. For the last two years, we've made this statement, and it has Are not changed. Board? No, oh. I'm a pilot. I know when I fly in who oh. I'm talking to. I can come in through the valley over Mumbiju. Until I get into the valley, they can't see me. When I come to Fredericksted, mm -hmm. they tell me to contact them when I get to the pier because they can't see me until I get there. Okay, okay let's go back to this Frederick Douglass um, Republican thing again. How many locally, how many members do you have? Well, locally, the party has just recently started over the, the movement has started over the last eight months. So we have about 25 members. Okay, and what exactly is your philosophy? And how do you intend to push St. Croix forward? Well, we, 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 we are based on our founding principles. We mm -hmm. believe in the Constitution. Right. We believe in the right to life. Mm -hmm. We believe in limited government. Which Constitution? The United States Constitution. Okay. Now, even though I may believe that we should take baby steps, and as far as us selecting a status free association may mm -hmm. be the thing, but I still believe that we should move to independence, but we're not ready for that mm -hmm. because we haven't determined how to do for us, by us, for us. Okay. You have a plan for that? That it's like? basically localizing. Start from the school system. Mm -hmm. Start educating our workforce from the schools. Put civics back in the schools, first of all. Okay. They understand who they are and what community they belong to. This is about us. This isn't about bringing people in to do for us. When you're hungry, you cook for yourself. You don't ask somebody from outside to send food from New York. Right. You take care of your needs. Okay. We need to do that. And I need to trust that when I need an attorney, I go to look for a good attorney. If I need a plumber, I go to look for a good plumber. But when I look for them, I'm calling 340. Okay. That is us. Why do we have schools that produce our people? We have a university with our name, yet we don't have any confidence in the people that have attended those and are part of our community. But Mr. Moyle, another, another irony in all of this. I hear people talk about civics and not ever so often, but do you know who sets the curriculum? The same people who set the curriculum is the ones who keep asking to put civics back in the school, then the University of Virgin Islands. The same people who talk about the University of Virgin Islands, they don't send the children to the University of Virgin Islands. They are on the board of the University of Virgin Islands. And so we have challenges over and over, but we keep putting these people in positions of power, uh, influential positions to change our, uh, our fortunes. And yet they have done it. They have not, now yet, to, to this day, they have not done it. Now, what makes you any different to make sure that you can make bring bring about transformation or reformation because that's one of the things on your platform reformation revitalization and rebuilding can you do those things and how can you get them done again old school is where we're at number one once you educate the populace as to what it is you're doing they have to buy into it and it has to have their interest in okay. it. okay what would your education bill look like what would you be your education I'm glad bill? you asked the education bill is going to be quite comprehensive because we go back to not only the diploma but you get a vocational certificate mm -hmm. during the first two years that's what you start with but in 11th and 12th grade your junior and senior year you're now doing your vocation at the actual uh, um, location. Uh, location with a private person that is overseeing you they do that already right now but if, if, I, if you don't mind do. yeah because my daughter would did vocation at um thing a complex when she graduated. But then he's talking and about a complex. No, but he's talking about a different. Why is no. every student? He's right, talking, but, but, but he's. I think he's talking about right every student. Mm -hmm. I think that's what. Not well, the ones my, that choose to do it. But, yeah, exactly. no, but my, my thing is, before you even get to that, you have to first set up. I would assume, are we going to be board run or even um, department run? Because you're, you're kind of jumping the gun. Because well, I, I there's, to there's, me, I'm I'm hearing a lot of good um, buzzwords and buzz phrases and key words and tag words in there, but I ain't really hearing a structure. So I need to know 
really with the education bill because I'm, it's like we are the same wavelength here. What would your education bill look like? Give me the bullet points. Well, now I'm afraid after you don't say about all of this, about <laughs> words and all of these kind of things, I don't know if I should say anything. Listen. Well, the audience wants to hear you. So the the reality something. is I, I don't want to be considered a politician because I'm far from it. I'm too rough around the edges. Mm -hmm. We oh, don't. we got some rough around the edges in there right now. No, but that's, that's, so, the, these are politicians. No, and they're the ones, and, they're the ones putting in these policy Well, let's do it this way. So, so make it easier for you. Let's okay. do it this way. Do you support a board run or a department education run education department? Meaning the commissioner or the board of, a board of education? At this stage, from what research I have done, the superintendent to me should be the liaison between both. And there needs to be a consolidation as far as that is concerned because education is top heavy. We don't have enough teachers that are actually in the classroom. Okay, but well, let's answer my question. Do you want to do a bill, would you have a bill where you're transferring a lot of those authorities that's currently now with the Department of Education to the Board to the, of Education? Yes. You support that? Yes. Do you I also support, support the where the principals actually have more... Side base. Right. They, they need to, well, no. they don't have twenty-five or $50,000 to Central High School for them fund. to do what they need to do. Really an impress. Basically an impress base. account up to a certain amount where they can manage and handle certain affairs. Um, as far as, you know, we've spoken with teachers before and, and I'm a bit two-sided with that. Administrators should not make the same amount as the teachers making because as far as I'm concerned, the teachers are in the classroom. They're the ones that are educating our kids and they need the resources. Right now we have teachers that have to go and um, thank God for Office Max giving specials for them to be able to buy the equipment they need to instruct our kids. That's crazy. We're spending $15,000 on public school education. Where's the money? They send and that's it back every year. dollars per child, you say? Per child. They send it back every year with the grants that they get, and then they're very, they're very um, afraid to really apply. So for as, as we can say here, with some people need to get slapped off. That's all it is. <laughs> but we, we have to stop allowing for these <laughs> types of poor investments. We need to start calling people out when they're doing foolishness with our money, and when it comes to, you know, us as a collective, we have to stop disrespecting the conversation. If you don't want to debate and you don't want to conversate, mm -hmm. then you need to go down to the market buy fish. That's where you at. Let me ask a question. Okay. <laughs> let me hear that question. Let me I'm not gonna get cuffed up now. No, no. <laughs> let me let me ask because you know you talk about civics in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And it's apparent that we need to have civics at the legislature. Yes. Because it doesn't appear that they know civics. Exactly. Uh, well, and this and uh, over these last couple of weeks, I can't say I agree that I would want to be independent with the confusion that's been going on over the last And I agree weeks. with you, but I agree um, with you. That's where free association comes in. And the reason why it's important <laughs> for us to have this discussion is because it's amazing to me. From this issue that's going on with Senator Hansen, how nobody really understands how the government really works and well, how things, how we inter, how we interrelate with yeah. other branches of government. People just don't get it. Well, here's the problem with that particular thing, and this is all I will say on it. This was taken away from the people. What was taken away from the people? The decision about Senator Hansen no, was in the legislature first. We could have had all the hearings, make all the decisions. The legislature said, okay, guess what? We don't know nothing about this. We will let the courts decide. At that point, you have no say. Whatever the court says, that's that. Mm -hmm. So the court has said something you don't like, so we're going to give it back to the people. The decision has been done. When the people could have had a decision in it, when it was at the legislature, the legislature said, no, let the courts decide. It was decide. even before then. It was when she went to the, supervisor, to the Board of Elections to run, and the supervisor, instead of doing due diligence and saying, well, you know what, you have this conviction, you cannot run, said he turned a blind eye and said, go on, do your business. So it was never really in the people's hands. I agree with that. But let me ask you this question. In your thing, you have reform, the structure of our government. What do you mean by that? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm getting trouble anyway. Mm -hmm. I believe in uh, the municipalizing of the government. Okay. We had municipal government before. When we left Colonial, we went to municipal. The municipal didn't work because we didn't have state-level government. So we scrapped municipal and then we brought in territorial government. That's not working because we don't have municipal government. You need the two. Under this particular flag, the American flag, any jurisdiction that you go, you have state level government, you have local and in some cases county level government. So there are tiers of government. I've written grants from the local level and the federal level from FEMA and all. Puerto Rico does a wonderful job because Puerto Rico applies for grants for Puerto Rico and the subdivision. But the subdivisions, Mayaguez, Bayamón, Fajardo, all of these places also apply for federal funding for their jurisdictions. 
we don't do this. And then we kind of get the scraps that are for the territories, Puerto Rico supervises what we get. So if there are $50 million for the territories, Puerto Rico will take what they want and give $100 million to the Virgin Islands. Mr. Bohead, you know you just answered, if you, if we, you just answered the first question that Senator and um, that's it. I'm going to say Senator Henderson, but... I don't know if that's a promotion. No, I'm not going to say Henderson. I'm not going to say Henderson. Go ahead. Senator Henderson. Again? Again. It's okay. It's okay. I'm going to say Henderson. He intimidates me. No, no, no. I'm going to say Henderson asked you about... About time. About board level. About the board... About governance for the... The, um, the school system. school system and if your argument that you just made applies to the, um, the governance of the school clearly because we have a presently a flat system that isn't working needs to be tiered so this um, the territory can do some of the function and the actual running of the schools can be done at the municipal level and, at the island level and, and even further from the municipal to the schools Co correct the prince, listen un unfortunately VLA is getting accolades but there are other good principles as well give them the opportunity to do their jobs that's what we're paying them for but again it's the same as the teachers if you don't give them the resources then you have you should have no expectations okay then how do we move all of these ideals because right now they're just ideals and their ideas and their theory how do we move them from out of your head onto the floor and onto the floor of the legislature well basically they've already been moved from my head and they've been reduced to writing so it's a matter of um, like I said, in 90 days, once you've gone into the legislature, I don't care who you are, you know what legislation you individually want to move forward for the next 18 months. So, for the for for the, for the two years you're there, if you do get elected, when? What would if you okay yeah okay, to put in okay. a, I said if you said as well, far as okay, reformation, what would be your niche? What would, what kind of senator would you want to be known for for those two years? The two years is to to actually develop business entities from within. For okay. us to be able to utilize. So you be the small business, and yeah. small Listen, business. Small center. businesses right now are designed to fail, and we've made that design. A small business loan should be from five hundred to five hundred thousand. That's small to medium. We have, we were asked a question about the RT Park. It's a white elephant. We have an industrial park for years that's empty, almost empty, but we don't use it. We should be manufacturing. I love mangoes. A friend of mine called me Mango Head. Don't care where it is. I go and get them. We can't ship them out. Going back to the same education, you can't ship them out. Anyhow, we no, can't process them out the same way. The sun kiss comes in here easier than I could get a mango out. See, yeah, that, that, but that's I what can't that's send it. sun kiss back. So why should I bring it in? Correct. There's about three hundred million dollars through the school lunch program. That's money that's here already. It's not mm. new money, but it's money that's here. Let our farmers be able to get that money producing the produce to the school lunch. All the farmers, not one or two. And once we get that. We have money coming into the community from one side. The object is to stimulate our economy. But you know, the, the, the strange thing here is how everything goes in circles. Mm -hmm. For about 20 years. A question come in now, or going to be for the run out of time? Is okay. That, is that direct question yeah. or? For, yeah. Is that direct? Okay. The preamble to the when, question. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> when are we going to take? When are we going to do these things about we talk about agriculture and moving? Because for 20 years we've been talking about manufacturing and processing agricultural products in the Virgin Islands and to this date we have yet to do it. So you have an actual bill put forward that would actually make that happen then? That's, I guess that's what he's asking. Oh yeah, that's the one we were talking about with agriculture, okay. using the school lunch program so, monies that is already there and basically getting our farmers involved with it. I, wait, I have to say this this way. I'm not a fourth generation farmer, okay? Mm. But you have to understand, you don't need to be a fourth generation farmer to enjoy eating fruits and vegetables. So the objective is those people that are involved in it, give them the resources that they need to produce it. I agree. Correct. I'm a no-generation farmer, but I enjoy <laughs> And you buy it. If and you so, produce it, you will buy it. And I will so, buy it. You're right. I and the buy farmer it. does not want to market. He doesn't want to advertise. He wants to grow his stuff, talk to it, and make it come nice. Somebody now, another opportunity for business, somebody now takes it to market. Another opportunity for business is somebody puts it in the market. So, These are the opportunities that I'm saying we need to invest for us by us. So now that we're out of time, will you please let everybody know um, where we can find you, you what can, your number is, if they have more questions for you. You can uh, find me on uh, Facebook, it's uh, Morehead for Senate. Uh, we have a website, moreheadforsenate.com. Um, my number is on the flyers. You can find me at 201-1379. I don't have any issues with regards to you calling me. As long as we're going to discuss issues, 
that's where I'm at. And what are you on the ballot, number one? On the number ballot? two on the ballot. So if you're wondering what to do, just vote number two. All right, well, you've heard it here first, all right. Thank you so much for being on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you for it. having me. Thank you and for having me. And we're back in with Ignacio Charles the third. Back in a moment. Good evening and welcome back to VI Voices. We now have with us Ignacio Llanos III, who is seeking a seat in the 31st Legislature of the Virgin Islands. Welcome to VI Voices. Oh, good night. This is your first time on the show? Yes, this is my first time. Your first time, okay. So welcome. And so let our audience know a little bit about you, why you're running, and why you're seeking that seat in the, in the legislature. Uh, my name is Ignacio Llanos III, and I'll basically be brief. I decided six years ago I actually wanted to run for Senate, but after speaking to a few previous senators, you know, I was a little raw. I'm still raw. And they, decide, they told me that I should sit back, take a back seat, kind of study the legislature and learn it more, and then come back when I think I'm ready. And right now I think I'm ready. I actually wanted to run because of the fact that, you know, I'm a member of the younger generation, and my generation tend to complain a lot. We know what the problems are, we have solutions for the problems, but we tend to either just make noise in the background or keep our mouth shut. So I'm deciding to put my foot in the race, to set an example in, the hope, in hopes that Next election, there's more members of the younger generation running for office as opposed to just the the norm. Yeah. Okay. And so talk a little bit about what you intend to do. If you are in fact elected, what, what is your vision for what you want to put forward in the legislature and for the people of, the, of St. Croix? Well, first of all, I like to focus on the youth. Okay. I'm a youth. I like to focus on the youth. And um, that ties in with economic development. I, I would like to see our island be boosted through sports tourism. Okay. Everyone has their own idea. Sports is my thing. I've been an athlete all my life, so I'm pushing sports tourism. Um, and if you want, I can go deeper into What about it. sports tourism are you pushing? Well, first off, there's the talks about the baseball arena, the baseball, the upgrade to the Polly Joseph yes. Stadium. If that's not passed, I would be one of the seven senators, if elected, pushing that to go through. Reason being, with that in place, and if we set everything up properly, and when I say properly, like for instance, if we have something like a Virgin Islands Sports Commission, and that's one of the ideas and one of the things I've actually been researching and looking into, we can actually reach out to professional baseball teams before Polly Joseph Stadium has been restructured and try to set up future contracts, you know, something within the next three, four years that, hey, when this is completed, you would have your spring training on St. Croix. And when I mean spring training, spring training, off-season training, um, they normally have it in warmer climates. So you reach out to the teams that are up in the colder climates and have them come down here. What that would do for the Virgin Islands is one, it would bring their fans. Two, it would bring competition, which would bring the fans of the competition. And that would help build the economy. Now with that, of course, we're gonna have to also add hotels because we're gonna need somewhere for people to stay. Okay. So, and like I said, we, we need to start somewhere now. I also believe in building from inside out but we have to have something to attract people here and i honestly feel like sports tourism would be that answer because you know at the sporting events we can also introduce our culture to the tourists and from that it would build more interest into the virgin Islands, and we would have more people wanting to come here as opposed to you know all the tourists going to st thomas st croix would be known as the sports tourism destination two of the things. caribbean two things um there already is a plan in place for Polly Joseph. I was a member mm -hmm. of the Charette about mm, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, and all that, what you discussed, they had already spoken to a few teams, actually, mm -hmm. and even a few minor league teams mm -hmm. who were literally on, you know, waiting to come in, should it, um, once it went forward. And I, I've seen but the current plans. I think the, the budget these, for it these, is... These plans that there now are not the original ones that the members, okay. uh, the community members, and again I'm going to say of which I was a part of, mm -hmm. had already approved, had money set to it, and because of politics, you know, all of a sudden it disappeared. So these okay. plans coming up now, I think only maybe the select few on God maybe see. And those will change. Yes. Yeah, because I know, I know there are currently there. plans with, with budgets set, and I think there's three different budgets. I really don't want to go into the exact well, budgets. Just, if you get in, just look back in like the early 2000, yes. And ask yeah, the so charrette the where was still oh it was it was all the way back then yes because Ken Mapp was um, head of the PFA and it was under was his direction school. well so there's, there's where your <laughs> research is going to come in to play now 
but you're talking about culture and and having you know broad, broadcasting our culture showing our culture mm -hmm. um so with that being said then i'm going to assume then that you have some plans for education reform because you can't just do culture if nobody know what culture is because since we're the melting pot of the caribbean mm -hmm. you're gonna have so many different things and we, need we to are yes so because we fly this so way we are not i'm so not so not well, I, 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 I'm a melting pot on my own, so I, 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 I agree with her. I'm actually St. Lucian Ketishan. We have everybody that comes here everything and, and mixed. So. We, are, <laughs> we are not a melting pot in the Virgin Islands. Of the Caribbean, we have a lot of people. Of the Caribbean. Uh, having a lot of people here yeah. just means I have a lot of people here. True. It doesn't mean that we're melting pot. Yeah. Why, why, why say that? Why say that? It that? That means true. that when all the people are here and they come out, we only see them as one. That's true. That don't happen here. That's true. So when I say so. that, because a lot of people get confused of what is Kujan culture, as opposed to what may be Ketishan culture, mm -hmm. or even Saint Lucian culture. Right. You know, or even and the there's room for all of it. There's room for all. But if if you're going to go that route, then you need to be able to educate the people as to what really is Kujan culture, and no, we ain't a dying breed. You know, right. and right. you know. So I'm going to again say that. You have plans then for education reform? The only plan I actually, well, the only thing I looked at within education, because I'm not too much into, well, I haven't looked too much into what's going on right yeah. now. Yeah. But I honestly feel like the Board of Elections should have, the Board of Education mm -hmm. should have more power than they mm -hmm. do right now. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and with that in place, of course, you know, you'd have to have experienced educators on the board, not just your brother, your sister, your auntie, your uncle, cousin, hey, mm -hmm. friend, come join us. No. People that know exactly what they're doing. That so are you would set criteria for board members. Yes. You would want to at least have a bill that sets the criteria for board members yes. of the Board of Education. Yes. Because they're elected in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But what about... Yeah, that's both. I'm sorry, go ahead. You say, Anush. That's good. That's good. The young man, I would assume 26, 27, 27. years old. Okay. There's something like an anomaly in our community, mm -hmm. meaning that you're not the norm. A lot of young men nowadays, we know that the, the current situation and how it's been affecting them as far as our society, our community, mm -hmm. and where they're at. You're not the norm. Okay. How, and I'm assuming since you're, you're, you're of that age, you kind of, you could speak to them or you could relate to them because of the age. Mm -hmm. As I've been doing already. Okay, and, and, and I know, I've, I've been speaking to them as well, and I know a lot of them don't really believe in what it will call a system or politics, and I don't even see how that will get us anywhere. How do you intend to reach them? How do you intend to talk to them beyond your age? How do you intend to talk to them and reach them again to understand that this is the way to go? Well, with it? I've actually started because I know number one, the key to me winning this election is to get the youth involved. I'm a member of the younger community, like I said, and I, it's up to me to get the youth involved because everyone, you know, when I, I drive around, I go to different neighborhoods. When I talk to, I, I would go on, I would stop on a corner. I don't care what time of the day it is, what time of night it is, I'd stop on a corner. I'd come out, I'd ask them if they registered to vote. Why aren't you registered to vote? I'm getting the excuses like, oh, if I register to vote, my name gonna be up for jury duty. Oh, if I register to vote, this is gonna happen, that's gonna happen. And I kind of try to, well, you know, tell them the positives in voting. Instead of sitting home saying, oh, I ain't got no job, so we come and vote. Vote for somebody who you feel would support your need for a job. Somebody who you feel would create more jobs. Somebody who you feel would, you know, benefit the Virgin Islands as opposed to just sitting home on the corner. What I've actually been doing since I announced that we be running for Senate in March, I drive around, you know, when I, on my free time, and I would stop in a community, and if I meet an individual, a group of individuals, and about four out of the group said they're not registered to vote, I would take them to register to vote if they're over the age of 18. And I would buy them lunch and drop them back when I'm done, and then go about my business. And I've been doing that. I, I could bring about 15 to 20 people that actually came with me to go to the Board of Elections. Oh, to and, what is it? and what is it that brought you to this point? What gave you that, that vision, that, that desire, that thirst for you to do what you're doing currently? Because of how I grew up. I grew up, I came here, well, I was actually born in Austin, Texas. Let's clear that up. My parents were in college. I was born in Austin, Texas. When my dad graduated. We came back home. He got a government job. We've been living here in Golden Rock. Growing up in Golden Rock, I went to Juanita Gadi. I went to school with kids from Shabbat, Kennedy, Red Brick, Wata, well, half of your Princess Project before it was demolished. Well, it's not demolished yet, abandoned. Gotcha. And Shabbat, same way. I grew up playing basketball in Shabbat. Most of the guys I grew up playing basketball with, I see them struggling right now. They didn't finish school, they didn't have that push, and right now they're struggling. Most of the kids I went to Juanita Garden with the other day, I posted a picture of my sixth grade cap and gown, you know, our class picture, graduation picture for the yearbook, and I couldn't even think of 50 people to tag because, you know, I can't find them. Most of them probably don't have access to computers. 
If I, I could look for their name all over the web, I can't find them. So okay. I've had the, uh, a kind of a first-hand experience. I can't get any jobs. Well, yeah. So maybe you can call the governor and no, see no, no, if he no, can no. help your friends to get a party. Uh, I, I, I want to ask you, though. I want to ask you this. What would you then do to assist them? Not just those yeah. individuals talk about, but generally the people that you've seen who are in the street corners. And, and I believe that while there may be some who just don't want to do anything, that's not the majority of them. Most of them want to work. Most of them want to have their own income. Most of them want to do things. But they have, may have criminal records or they may be lacking education. What can you do as a younger person to, to kind of use your skill in legislature to change that, create more programs for them that they're able, and, and, and let's assume that you can create a program where they can learn something that they can, as a result of completing this program, then they can get records expunged, that they're able to they do the things that they want to do. Okay, well, see, first of all, everyone does what they want to do. I could try my best to get them to change their minds and come on a better path, but it's up to them to do that. And that would actually fall into something else that I have planned for the youths. Um, I, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody please, but. In the Virgin Islands, we have a registry for abandoned and unused government-owned property, right? Government-owned buildings. Okay. But what we don't have is a registry for abandoned buildings. Okay. If we can get a registry of abandoned and unused buildings and offer those buildings on a free 10-year lease to nonprofit organizations here in the Virgin Islands, where within that 10 years, they have to repair, restructure, you know, build it up and use it as their office space, we could open up a lot of things for these, like for instance, the different youth programs within arts, performing arts, the dance studios, recording studios, things that the youths tend to, you know, reach out to as opposed to just math, science, English, you know, the v different vocational trades that they would more rather do as opposed to go back in the classroom, get an education. So like I said, you give them that opportunity as money saved. They have office space, they have recording space, they have things that, resources that they can use to help the youth and bring in the youth to want to do something other than sitting at home. That's a, that's a very good idea, and uh, I remember a few, about 15 years ago, I was on a non-profit organization, and um, we went to CBDG for funding, mm -hmm. and we were in a building in Fredericks then, and CBDG indicated they would gladly give us funding to repair the building. The only thing they need us to do was to get a, a long-term lease, which was a, they would consider 20 years mm -hmm. from the landowner, and the landowner refused, because the black grant was going to actually give us the money to rehab the whole building, but they didn't want us within five or seven years to be out and this landlord benefit. Mm -hmm. and, and that's our idea that we maybe need to put and in see, I, I honestly didn't know that, main street. but what raised that idea in my head is the fact that when I drive through Christian Town, and Frederick said Town, it's, it's, it's not as pretty as it was when I was a kid. Yeah, there's a lot of decay. And, and with that, it would also help the beautification of Christian Town and Frederick State. So, but a lot so of I that, do. sorry, a lot of that comes from the, um, especially in Fredericksted, you you have um, OTF and others that you know you have to repair by certain standards, mm -hmm. and a lot of these families can't afford the repairs there, so that's why the properties stay abandoned. So, well, stay looking as though that's they're abandoned. But a lot of it, a lot, part of it. OTF sets the standards. No, no, no. no. Preservation 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 okay, I, I knew it was someone. But I, I mean, but a lot of it also deals with with the fact that you have families who own these things yes. and, and none of them have wills or anything so 40 people own something that right. 20 don't want and, and so nobody can and so right. that's so one of the issues so but I mean, that's like government, government own property. property yeah but the government yeah. can go in an eminent domain and take the yeah. property from them and, yes. and do what they want to do with them it, live so. away and one live here and, and that one that live here wants to keep it they don't care how it looks well let me ask you this question uh because you're talking about youth uh, I'm not sure if you talk about education. I think you you touch on it where board. you wanted to talk about um, board governance. Board. board governance, but what about the the curriculum part of it? What who what, what do you see as the future of our curriculum to get our young people to be interested again in learning? Well, there's ideas out there about you know enhancing the vocational program, but the career and technical program has been there for years, and some youth still don't tend to go to it. Um, because we're doing it wrong. That vocational school that we have over there, we're treating it like a high school. Mm -hmm. And that's not what was the purpose of the vocational school. It wasn't to be treated as a high school. It was supposed to be one of those things where the entire community 
has a right to participate and go into the schools and do that stuff. We're not using it correctly. But I think they have that in the evening too. Yeah, but it's not, it should be all day. It, it should be in the evening. At any but time then you day, have a mix of the high school students with the adults no, and that's it's problem. The high school students shouldn't have been over there in the first place. Well, the facility place. should be separated. Well, I, well, it doesn't have to be because it's closed off. Yeah, but what, I'm, so what, I'm saying, what I'm saying is yeah. that we did not use the vocational school the way for that it was designed to be right. used. See, my, my, cousin, my mom works on that side. Mm -hmm. Closed off or not, those kids find a way over there. So, yeah, but the original plan had called for the high school to be up where the old hospital is in um, Christian's Yes, I didn't know about that. That was going to be the original plan. And then the University of the Virgin Islands is wisdom for Nagels and got some. <laughs> So they, 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 and they eventually abandoned this whole idea of the school being placed. They, mm -hmm. they gerrymandered to get the school to be placed right across from them. However, after it was built, uh, even in the conception of it being built, they abandoned it. Speaking of our University of Virgin Islands, I'm actually trying to see what control the government has over University of Virgin Islands, if any. I'm, that's something I'm looking into right now because when I heard about the deal and I looked into it where the sports complex, not sports complex, the gymnasium in St. Thomas, when the monies came for that, it was actually supposed to be half and half St. Croix, St. Thomas. So right now I'm trying to find out why did that money go to St. Thomas only and what can we do to get some type of funding source here to put something in place at UVI to build a gymnasium or an auditorium or something to host big events at UVI. Like for instance, the graduation that was held under the tent that I attended. I sat down in the grass because I couldn't even fit inside. And you attended it? Yeah, I attended. I I'm have a few I'm friends that graduated. Actually, I'm actually glad you said that because what it was anything on everything go to St. Thomas. And it's not an easy task in, in, in getting much of anything to St. Croix. So in saying that, I want to know what, tell me, sell me, sell me on yourself. How I know that you're going to go in there and have the kind of test tool, the, 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 the guts, the intestinal fortitude, the, 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 the testicular fortitude, fortitude for you to go in, in there and do what's right in terms of the people. Well, first of all, I love St. Croix. I've lived Everybody here. Does I, that I, one. Yeah. I, 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 and that's understood. I've mm -hmm. lived here since I was a kid. My fiance is a police officer here, and she gets on me all the time because she wants to leave. And if she leaves, she'll be leaving at home. We will communicate via yeah. webcam and. The, uh, so then you'll be single for a while. Then. No, no, no. We'll be together. Uh, okay, we'll communicate via webcam well, and. And well, why she uh, watches this show? I'm not sure. And she can visit. Okay. She can come home and visit. But okay. I told, and we spoke about this already. <laughs> I told her straight up. I am never. I am never leaving St. Croix. I don't. If I leave, it would be for a vacation. I left in 2003. I finished high school in Connecticut. I moved on. I went to University of New Haven, Connecticut, where I played football and volleyball. I then moved. I transferred over to Monroe College for a little bit, and I came home. I'm 31 credits shy of my bachelor's degree. I don't have my bachelor's yet. Okay. I plan to work on that in the future. Where? I was a, here in the Virgin Islands. Okay. University of the Virgin Islands. Okay. I'm a computer science major. Okay. Um, and like I said, I have no plans on leaving. And if I'm planning to stay here, I'm gonna want St. Croix to be, you know, the best it can be for my kids, my grandkids, my great grandkids. So I can tell them stories about how I helped bring St. Croix back to what it was years ago. Well, let me help you along so you can answer boy question because you didn't answer his question. I didn't? So yeah, so no, you didn't. <laughs> okay. Um, you don't start in other politics, words, right? when you go to the legislature, mm -hmm. how can we be rest assured that you're not gonna go in there and be trampled? by the more seasoned lawyers and lawyers the more seasoned <laughs> um, <laughs> senators <laughs> who, uh, i don't know the more seasoned senators well, honestly, there, and I, then you don't really have a voice because they're like on top of you exactly. and you can't well, see, stand up to them i don't plan on being a one-term senator okay i'm going to be everything in court okay and that's that i'm going to be everything yeah, but doesn't, that if doesn't it's not beneficial me, that doesn't tell me right. that you can stand up to the right. donald duck's call or you can stand i can up stand up to, to anybody okay. I, i'm not I, no one can buy me I'm well, not, that's what we need yeah. here that's why yeah, I'm, not, I'm not person. easily persuaded i i have my own mind and i i, I you know make my own decisions okay now right. me running for the senate the only people that i have to answer to are the people of the virgin islands okay. Not the, the senators who are trying to, gonna try to bully me into doing what they want me to do. No, okay. that's not going to happen. So I hope that answers your question. So here's a quick one, interview question. Um, you're in a position where your um, supervisor tells you to do something that is ethically wrong. Are you going to go along to get along? Eth ethically wrong? Ethically wrong. No, I, I would not go along to get along, no. And it happens currently where I work. It happens and I, I can say that and okay. my boss is probably going to watch this, but yeah. My supervisor and I have both heads many times because I'm not doing anything that's against what I think is right. Okay, if that good. answers your question. Good. Very good question. It does. Well, you got a job there, buddy. But, I, but you know, what, what, 
Well, you know, I noticed that you were asking these people your usual question. You know why? Because <laughs> I've, 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 I've changed my mindset to believe that, you know, positive, when he get here, he don't get upset, but he need to just write the bill and be done with it. Okay. That's my point. Okay. So All right. it, it, it really ain't making much of a sense because, first of all, you have to educate the people on what cannabis is. You understand? And too many people just don't know what cannabis is. And you have some real... Um, and I'm actually one of those people because the cannabis I know, well, leading into the marijuana part, has actually done cannabis negative. Is mar marijuana is cannabis. Okay, well, it's actually done negative to kids that I've coached. Because when I moved back home in 2009, I started working on various nonprofit organizations, the St. Croix Private School Pirates, um, Choices Basketball Association, uh, Positive Guidance Group, that's what they say, and um, Youth Lifeline America, which is actually from the stateside. Mm -hmm. It's a group of actors, professional football players, who come down to the Virgin Islands and they started a program in St. Thomas, St. Croix kids weren't included. So we did whatever, everything we could to have St. Croix kids included. And for two years, I took 40 football players and I think it was 10 females because there was a, a fitness segment of it too where mm -hmm. they had the ex-stars of, I don't know if you guys remember the TV show, American Gladiators? Mm -hmm. Yes, Star and some of, the other, some of the other cast members were there. We took them all to St. Thomas and they stayed there for the week where they participated in various life skills um, classes and then throughout the day they either went into the exercise room or played football and it was like a big competition and a closing ceremony with trophy presents. It, it, it was nice for the kids. So um, yeah and wait. You were talking yeah, about how the, the, oh, the marijuana. How the how that, okay yeah. my football players. I've yeah. had football players that I know who the smokers were because most of the kids that I dealt with from the private school pirates they um, you know came from the West Indies Heritage Institute. A lot of kids that go there were thrown out of the public school system. They then went to West Indies. So I had a lot of those boys. I had some boys from Alternative. And they used to straight up tell me, yeah, we don't want weed, I don't smoke. I don't. And I tried to get them out of it to the point that, you know, you came to practice high, goodbye, you have to leave. Now, the ones who were smokers, that, that you know, whether they stopped or they continued or they did it away from me or not on my time, they couldn't run laps. While running, they got short breath or they looked to vomit while on the field. Or during play, they'd have to call and ask for a timeout because they're short breath. Because, oh, yeah, I bought some weed today. Okay, go home. That, that's been a problem. And then you have to look at, you know, the bigger picture. We have professional athletes here from the Virgin Islands right now. In particular, one Jab Jabari Blash that I was reading about, he plays in the Triple A's. He's basically one step away from being in the major leagues. Hits a home run or two every game he plays. He was just suspended for the second time, and now he received a 50-game suspension from his team because he was found with marijuana. So, so there's an effect. You, were, yeah, you wouldn't support the bill though, to legalize it. I would not support the bill to legalize but it. But you know, the, and that's where the education if comes in, comes because forward. everybody assumes marijuana right now. is going to be smoked yeah. and it's not well, going to be no, smoked. Well, you know what though? I think I can understand. It's an ignorance no, no, in there no, that people no, no, are I don't not think it's really an ignorance. taking the time I think, to educate themselves. No, no I don't about think it's an ignorance. I think that people, I'm, have, I'm willing a, to I learn. people have a right to, no, don't change your opinion. If that's what you believe, and you don't, then stick to it. What but I'm saying, no, 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 no. What I'm saying is, don't change your mind because you think that someone thinks you're you're. True. you're I wasn't changing my mind. I wasn't changing my mind. That's what I'm saying. Right. And what okay. I'm saying is that, as you know, Mr. VLA had something on what people posted on Facebook. We yeah. were talking about it, and when I really read what it is, he was saying clearly the heading that they had on there misconstrued what he was saying. And I think what, what you're saying is that you have observed mm -hmm. the effect of young people smoking marijuana. Right. And so you are at a pause for supporting something that may not have the kind of regulations necessary to ensure that the young people you have seen yeah, no, doesn't have yeah. access to it. But and I don't think that nothing is wrong mm -hmm. with someone who feels that way. Yeah, he's not bad. saying that it's bad for everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. What he's saying that he, now correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. is that who he has observed, which is these young people, the effect that this has had on them mm -hmm. has not been positive, so he doesn't want to support. And I think he has a right to say, I don't want to support it under that grounds. He may change his mind. If a bill comes that actually that makes sense. protects these young people, then he has a right to change my that point. But I don't want, because I hear a lot of proponents, mm -hmm. when people say that they don't agree with it, the first thing they jump to is, well, it's because you don't know it. And I don't think that's necessarily fair to say. They really don't know it. I just don't agree with it. I mean, I don't know. Anyway. But this, the cigarettes does the same thing, too. I, I agree with you. Well, and I, 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 I don't want you to smoke cigarettes yeah, either. I don't, I don't cigarettes, promote cigarettes? smoking cigarettes either. Right. I actually no, hope we could put a syntax right. on cigarettes I, I, I in the I don't promote cigarettes either. Because if you go to but New York, you, you can... 
If you yeah, go to New York, you can buy a... Children still can't get a hold of cigarettes. I agree with you. I completely agree with okay. you. And But that argument necessarily doesn't... Uh, okay. I got to you know, so you know, ballot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, no, before I finish, I was trying to... Okay, go ahead. Um, yes, you can actually go to New York and purchase yeah. a, a carton of cigarettes for, for $65. $65 yes, yes. per carton of cigarettes <laughs> in New York. You know, you ain't done. And here in the Virgin Islands, you, know, you can buy for $25. So there's people that purchase it here to send it away. Now, me, myself, I've never smoked anything in my life. I tasted alcohol once my whole life. I never drank it again. I'm not a supporter of drinking alcohol either, so I'm not one of those who believe in alcohol but don't believe in marijuana, no. Now, my name is Ignacio Answer Third. I'm number 18 on your ballot. No. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Ignacio Answer Third, or Ignacio Answer Third for Senate. You can actually call, you can also call me at area code 340-220-3355, or you can send me mail at RR1, box 7045, Kings Hill, USVI. 0850. I might just vote for you yeah. just because you just shut because. up. No. <laughs> no, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. You know what? You just did. You just did. You, you just show just your testicular fortitude. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. So Yano, okay. don't, don't study about that. The only thing I tried to do was I tried to move you away. The two of them were yapping. And, and, and then you took over. All we want to say is, I'm not finished. And then I said, now, that's what I heard him say. Anyway, thank you so much for being on the show, Senator Yano. Yes. No, no, no. We'll be back in a moment. Back in a moment. Back in a moment. And welcome back. Tonight we had a very spirited discussion with both Mr. Robert Moorhead and Ignacio Janos III. And um, quickly, Clint, what were your thoughts? Um, Other than being <laughs> closed out? <laughs> but, that I know, right? What I'm were your some, thoughts? I'm somewhere. I don't know. Um, oh, I'm still... No, honestly, because... I know. I'm, 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 I'm still trying to figure out Mr. Moorhead. I'm still trying to figure out Mr. Moorhead. Young Mr. Janos. He, to me, he's definitely has the, he knows the right, he knows the things to say. You can definitely, as he says, he's wrong. And he, I think, gi give him another two years, he will be ideal with some grooming. And I, I think he'll be something really good. With, I yeah, agree with, with you. Some grooming he may be right a little here. bit raw right now, um, but with some more grooming, I think he'll be a really good. But that's good. No, 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 to be thrown into the wolves with who are there if you are not fully yet grounded in your group. We he doesn't, that have, to, no. he doesn't there. have to he doesn't have to be perfect. Mm. But he has to kinda have that in other words, if he has to come with people, people like you right. or like you, who are gonna be in his staff and say, Watch not this is what we're gonna be doing to kinda protect him right. from a lot of these other things while he continues to groom himself into that. Not that he can't. I think he'll be great. As mm -hmm. a, I can listen to him. I can see that he generally wants to do what's right, and he's mm -hmm. going to do what's right. But when you go in there, it is not the easiest place to traverse yourself around in the Senate because there's so much stuff happening, and you got to deal with 14 other crazies, <laughs> and then you got to deal with the executive branch and their nonsense, and it could be overwhelming. I, but I, mean, I understand what you're, what you're saying. And how his ideas intersect. You don't realize it right now. A lot of the things that he's pushing are you are to each other, right. but he they see he sees them as all different Separate. issues. Like sometimes the education issue that he's pushing can be a part of his tourism argument. Mm -hmm. Even the small business development argument can fit into his tourism, his sports tourism development. He just have to be able to condition the idea, massage it, and then yes, and all, that, and, and all that is fine. All that is fine, and I go along with what you're saying in terms of people surrounding himself with people or people being around their guiding in that world. I, I think that's what he would need. If he has the right people behind him supporting him, he will be that's what he would need. Because we got to keep in mind, you know, that just these people here... Just because they're not here don't mean that he don't have ah. them. But that's true too. But no, no, we, but no, what I'm saying... He says values. What I'm saying is, is that we, got, we, have, we have to support the youth. 
and the youth currently especially are man in the time they're man in the time with that right spirit I could see the brother got the right spirit all he needs is yeah. guidance that's what he needs and I totally agree with that one doesn't... thing he did, one thing he is is like the rest of these brothers around here he's fearless and that's what we need we oh, have yeah. to realize that that's what we pray for yeah. you understand yes. I don't blame none of the children, I blame us. Because we don't be there, we don't be there like you're talking about being supportive. And I think we need to guide them and mold them. The fact that he's rap, we need to guide them and mold them in that direction. But you and I are saying the exact same thing. The only thing you're saying to guide them, I'm saying give him... He needs I don't think he need no more two years. I, do, I agree with Boyd. I, I don't think, think he need no more two years. Right I think people are going right him, now with the right yes, people around and he good. him. That's what is important. Yes, the he right people. He has a good people. chief of staff, a good policy That's advisor. Right. So to really and help him to get through it. Yes. And he'll learn it. Um, mm -hmm. And he'll do a good job. Boyd, you can have that emotion and feelings about that. I'm going to tell you straight up. <laughs> Timing is a, is a very important factor. And I'm going to give yeah. you a good example. At the, um, at the guidance conference in high school, I did a, no, no, hold on, hold on. I did a guy. No, 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 listen to me, the man. I got a guy that comes in high school. Don't take it down, Amiga. No, 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 no. I got a guy that comes in high school. I was looking at my the senior class had a, a lot of problems. They were resembling the, the same, they were displaying a lot of the same behaviors that the nine graders were displaying. And I wanted to know what was going on here. The senior class before, they were very mature and, 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 and it. But some of them are not the smartest boys. But this group were made up of a lot of smart children. And do you know what the problem was? A, a, a great majority of them was one year ahead. One calendar year ahead. That they were supposed to start school at five, but they started kindergarten at four. And developmentally, you don't think it. That one year affects your development. It does affect your development. You may not think it. But time... I don't agree with it either. You yeah. know, let me tell you why I don't I saw, I You know why I'm going to tell you why I don't know? Because I know. Yeah. No, no, no. I know. What, factually, what speaking, speaking, factually speaking. No, what? what kindergarten? Four, four, kindergarten? Yeah, four. How, when did you make your fifth birthday? Your fourth. The, within a year. What, what, you hear that? Within the year. Right. I had stu um, students who made their fourth birthday the following August when they were supposed to be going into first grade. Oh. So they made five when they were supposed to be going into first grade. I still don't agree with that because my okay. daughter got it. Some, I mean, people, some people, it depends on, it depends on how you hey, develop. Trust each child develops differently. Development is key. Each child, true. Each child develops differently. I do. I totally agree with that. But factually speaking, though, you know the frontal lobe, the place where like, memory, retention of rules, regulation procedures, that don't develop until we're 21 years old. Factually well, speaking. Well, it ain't developed for some of them now. That's yeah, right. And they're 40 and 50. <laughs> but some old, what okay. you felt about him, about both of them, actually? I honestly, I would, mm, I would, I would give, I would definitely be giving Yano some hope. I, I really like, you know, I mean, I, I didn't agree with some of what he said, right. but he still shows promise. And like okay, I said, coach. yeah, you know, and and he shows that yes, he can stand up with the best of them in there. So that's. You good. know why voted for this year? I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. You said about Morehead. Morehead. Um, I still gotta watch him. Okay. okay. That's all I can say. Right now, Mohammed is a chairman, so I can understand why you have to watch him. But um, as far as, as far as, <laughs> boy, I was not slight against you. But boy, as far as, uh, <laughs> thank God he didn't call a sweetie, big man. You see you. <laughs> but as far as, I mean, he has some good ideas. He has some good ideas, and he um, and he's very articulate, and he and he expresses himself well. Um, that's like, yeah, let me shut up. I, he I, said I, that's I'm like you, boy. Boy, she trying to throw water. Be very, very lady, boy, right? she <laughs> throw water. She saying, she says he's like I you. Hope, I hope not. But um, I do. I, I need to be around him a little bit more to see in terms of where he won't go to see his, his personality. I should have asked him a question like how I asked Janos, in terms of him being developed, and not necessarily developed, but having a testicular or, or intestinal fortitude to do what's in the best interest of the people. He may just want to do what's in the best interest of himself and in his group, and. Dying on walk, not nowadays, not now. Dying on walk at all. Dying on never walk. He wants to talk too much. Go ahead, to make me, um, um, judge. <laughs> well, <laughs> who are you gonna vote for this year? <laughs> this year, I am voting for people who have high moral standards. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. If you ain't have high moral standards, then you can't get my vote. I watched the the the, the petition file or the campaign file by Attorney Rowan on behalf of. Chucky and her other people oh. and has in there <laughs> that the people should be able to write to vote for their standard bearer and yeah. if Santa Hansen is our standard bearer then Lord we ain't got Jesus. no standards and so I'm looking at people who have some standards and moral fiber <laughs> to be able to do what they need to do because it is now September 9th mm -hmm. and I have yet to see the legislature have a session that says Santa Hansen you got to go 
by I've yet to see it. You need to go. I've yet to see it. And they should have done it already. And so that means it says to me that they, everybody thinks it's okay to be a lawmaker, violate the law, not paying your taxes in violation of that law. And so what? I don't, I don't agree. But I don't agree entirely uh, because I don't think that everybody is saying that. I think it's more, more being. I think it's fair. Well, no, but they stay there. Then you have a gun. Then you have a gun. I vote for the people. No, I'm not. I'm not justifying. I'm not just, I just think. I just talk. I just talk in terms of being afraid. I don't think that um that they don't have the moral fiber. Someone may have moral fiber, but they're afraid to act on it. Then you need to go. You got a moral fiber. I ain't saying that they should be there. That's not my point. My point is I don't think that it's entirely a moral thing. I think it's fair. I think I'm fair to restrict. I don't know repercussions. She's a woman like me, like any other woman. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. They may be afraid of repercussions, but then if that's what you're afraid of, then you also don't have any business. Let me give you an example. And so that I will not be voting for. Last, listen to examples. Senator Samuel Sanchez. <laughs> oh boy. He's at no, he's at the cusp of losing his seat. If you okay. think about it. Okay. If Senator Hansen is on the ballot, he can definitely say that he has a fair chance of losing his seat. So does he be one in the legislature along with Senator um, K Park who penned the letter and put it forth and I think that he should want to do it because it's the right, right thing, thing to do. do. Not because he wants hey, so her to come out. Hey, even that, but even because of self preservation. At least that should motivate you. I guess. Well, well, yeah. well let's, let, let's see what, what, what's going to happen as we go along this election process. As you know, we are here to ensure that you are educated on the process and to make sure that you understand what you should be looking for, the questions that you should ask, so you can make an informed decision on your vote. This is a critical election. Lots of stuff going on. But we need to be focused on the issues and focus on who to best to place in our legislature so that the people of the Virgin Islands can actually be at the forefront and things can actually move forward. After these last eight years, we have been down a, a spiral hmm. that, that I'm not sure how we're going to make our way up. But we're, we're going to do it. But we have to do it by being educated and informed in the process. So be sure that you do that and make sure your voices are heard. Good night, everybody. Yeah.